Mayong Adlaw o Mayong Adlaw sa Tanan. I am Junri Anthony M. Remolio from the Department of Agronomy and Plant Breeding, College of Agriculture, Central Mindanao University. At this time, I will be discussing about sampling techniques and sample size. This topic is very relevant as far as statistics is concerned. And normally, even in, is in a census or for those people who are working in a Philippine Statistics Authority, then it is very relevant for them to do these sampling techniques because this is one of the effective ways in order to measure a particular population. And it is implied that it is impossible for us to measure the population itself of a given location, country, or whatever measurement. That is why we are focusing about measuring the statistics. So this gives us an idea about what are those different sampling techniques that could be applicable with respect to whatever research or data you desire to obtain? So give me a minute to show you my slides. Okay. So sampling techniques and sample size. So before that, let us recap the definition of the following terminologies that are relevant in statistics. So first, we need to know the difference between a population and a sample. So a population is a set of measurements of a, par of a variable taken on all the individuals specified to be in a population and it is also defined as the entire collection of people or things you are interested in and it is also the entire group of individuals or items from which a sample may be selected for statistical measurement because i've mentioned earlier it would be hard for us to get an exact value of a population because it is indeed a very large value that is why we get the sample which is a representative or a portion value from a population and that would be our basis of measurement about the entire population so on the other hand a sample is a subset of a population or a set of measurements that constitutes part of a population. It is a representative of the population from which we compute estimates of population parameters. So it's also important for us that we need sufficient representatives of our sample in order to come up with a valuable valuable amount or a value of data we wish to obtain in a particular population. So, let's know the difference between a parameter and statistic and what is their relevance about the population and the sample. So, a parameter is a numerical characteristic of a population such as the population mean, the population deviation, population standard deviation, population variance, etc. And it is a fixed value we seldom know. And it is denoted by the Greek letters of mu or sigma, rho, lambda, tau, theta, alpha, or beta. However, a statistic is a measurable characteristic of a sample. It is often used to estimate a parameter. And generally, it is symbolized by a Roman letter X bar or Y bar, S or S squared. So actually, 
these denotations or symbols are already discussed during our earlier topics of this subject. So if we try to get the parallelism of a parameter and statistic, no? parameter is the numerical characteristic of a population. Whereas statistic is the numerical characteristic of a sample. And as I've mentioned earlier, we, we need to obtain the sample of a particular population in order for us to criticize or make some conclusions or analysis about the entirety of a, a population. Okay? So most likely in our discussions in statistics, then what we are trying to measure is about the statistic. So meaning we, we only need to obtain the, sum, the value from the sample, which is a subset of the population. Though in, for instructional purposes, we also need to illustrate how we can compute for the population standard deviation, population variance, etc. But when we apply it in reality, when we do application, then we only measure the sample. The measurable statistic of the sample is called statistic. So these are the difference of the formulas in getting the mean, the standard deviation, and variance. So as you can see, as illustrated in the earlier slides, they differ you know, mostly in the symbols or denotations. So in a population, N, it is capital N for population and small n for the sample. Okay, that, that, is, that pertains to the number of the set of values in a particular observation. Okay, and for the standard deviation and for the variance. Okay, you should remember these formulas because these are very important, especially in solving these uh, statistical measures of data. So let's jump to the types of samples. So first type is the non-probability or the non-random samples. So this pertains to samples that are focused on volunteers, easily available units, or those that are just happen to be present when the research is done. On the other hand, these are non-probability samples that are useful for quick and cheap studies, for case studies, for qualitative research, for pilot studies, and for developing hypotheses for future research. From the word itself that is non-probability or non-random, it is implied that when you choose samples that are subjected for your research, then you choose based on your convenience, especially those data that can easily be reached. So it is not based on uh, on zero percent chance. No, unlike in a unlike in a probability samples, which we will discuss later. So. Kumbaga, if it's non-random, it means that you intentionally obtain this particular data subject for your research. And it is applicable wherein if there are there is no sufficient uh, data to be gathered or it is not sufficient or only few appropriate samples that are applicable in your research can be found. So the examples of non-probability samples are first the convenient sample. It is, it is called an, an accidental sample or man in the street sample. So the researcher selects units that are convenient, 
close at hand, easy to reach. So that is why it is called convenience sample. When you try to comprehend convenience sample, in, given that it is non-random, so you are just actually obtaining some data and coming up with a conclusion based on the data which are easy at hand to be obtained. Okay? That is why it's called convenience. Madali lang makuha. The second one is the purposive sample. So this type of sample, the researcher selects the units with some purpose in mind. For example, students who, lives, who live in dorms on campus are experts on urban development. So when we, when we come up to this kind of sample, it means that in your mind as a researcher, you already have a plan that in getting a particular data, then your class, you already have a set, you have already set a pool of clients that you want to interview or to obtain a, a particular data. And you are being specific with the type of respondents you need to be interviewed or to be obtained with a particular data. For example, if you want to, to, to gather a data about performance of some students who live in dormitories, because in a particular institution, some students have their own, or they, some students are commuters rather, and there are also some who switch to live in boarding houses or pads. And on the other hand, there are also students who, who opt to stay in dormitories. So as a researcher, you are already purposive because you have already perceived in your research that you want to obtain data from students who live in dorms. Okay. And then 1.3 is the some the quota sample. The researcher constructs quotas for different types of units. So for example, an interview of a fixed number of farmers in a barangay, half of whom are male and half of whom are female. And other samples that are usually constructed with non-probability methods include library research, participant observation, marketing research, consulting with experts, and comparing organizations, nations, or government. However, in this type of research, you are actually setting a quota. So meaning, you are you have already identified that regardless of your respondents, you have already set a quota which pertains to the specific number and type of respondents you want to obtain the data with. Okay? And then that is all about the non-probability samples. So let's jump to the probability-based samples or random samples. So ano ibig sabihin nito? So these are samples that are based on probability theory, meaning that for every unit of the population of interest must be identified and all units must have known non-zero chance of being selected into the sample. So it means that if there is a non-zero chance of being selected in the sample, it means that you are casting or selecting some samples without any bias or without any prejudice or preset plans of choosing this particular set of data because you you discover that these are more valuable and so and supporting to your desired result no? are you getting the point so there is on the other hand there is an equal chance of selecting whatever 
set of data or whatever particular data you will select in order to be your subject for evaluation in your particular research. And in this case, when you do random samples, then you avoid committing biases or being handicapped. So there are types of samples. So these are the difference of the probability random sampling and non-probability some non-probability non or non-random samplings. So for probability sum sampling or probability or random sampling, it allows the use of statistics and it can be able to test hypothesis because you are actually when you when you select some data or samples in a in a randomized uh, arrangement then there is an equal chance for all the samples no to be selected no so there is an equal chance there are no biases and those data are valuable in order for you to use statistics to measure you know, what is the mean, what is the standard deviation, what is the variance within and among the data. Now, whereas non-probability are exploratory and it generate, they can generate hypothesis, but it would be, it is not reliable for you to test the hypothesis because in the first place, you already have you already had a pre-made decision to choose this and that. So you are just actually exploring. You are not testing. For probabilities, some for probabilities random sampling, you can estimate population parameters. And for non-probability, population parameters are not of interest. Can you see the difference? When you do non-random, you don't care about the entire population because you are just so focused on that particular data or values in a given population which caught your attention or which, which brings interest on your part. Okay? And then it eliminates bias. And then for the non-probability, adequacy of the sample can't be known. So actually, evident ang kanilang mga difference. And then, must have a random selection of units for the random sampling. And for non-probability, cheaper, easier, quicker to carry. Okay? Para bang, for example, no, in, in an instant noodles, so... Madali lang, madaling ihanda, pero makikita mo no na you are, it is not guaranteed that all the nutrients that are needed by your body cannot be found or cannot be found in that particular noodles because it's already pre-made. Madali lang ihanda. Okay? Whereas when you do when you do that uh real food cooking about noodles probably you you will use pasta gagamit ka ng pasta pero ginagamit mo talaga yung mga totoong ingredients and it would really take time and kailangan mong kailangan mo ng estimate in order to come up with the right formulation of that particular ingredient no or particular delicacy or noodles para masarap siya ang kainin okay so you are actually doing statistics no because you are trying to do some random steps in order to formulate such uh, aroma and then the taste that you have Desire. So it follows a due process or a proper process. Okay? But in a particular instant uh, product, no, in general, kitang kita muna yung desired, desired uh, taste na gusto mo. 
Okay? I hope you, you, you get the difference and the distinguishment between the two random, two, or the two probability, or the two types of sampling. So let's jump to the sampling techniques and sample size. Okay, so sampling refers to the method of getting a small but representative cross-section of a population. So this process, which involves taking part of a population, making observations on this representative group, and then generalizing the findings to the bigger population. So according to Bradfield, uh, in 1980, sampling can also be defined as the process of measuring the small portion of something followed by the general statement about the whole thing. So same principle about evaluating a particular population. We are actually focusing on the representative sample in order to better analyze what is a population or what is in the entirety of a given population. So sampling techniques are utilized to ensure the validity of conclusions or inference from the sample of the population. So this include simple random sampling, stratified random sampling, systematic random sampling, cluster sampling, and most multi-stage sampling. So we will know what are the difference of these types of sampling techniques. Okay? I am sure that even in your daily daily activities, you, you, you don't realize that there are some there are some point in your in your activity wherein you are actually doing statistics. You are actually doing sampling techniques. And it is just confirmed, you no, know, when when we talk about science, then especially for conducting a research, you no, know, a scientific research, you no, know, that the characteristic of the data to be gathered should be obtained in a randomized randomized distribution in order to avoid bias because in general if we conduct research kailangan talaga yung ma-obtain nating data or ma, ma, ma formulate natin na conclusion is based on the data we gather that is valid and empirical it is not based on preference or kumbaga as desired or as you wish because you think that this data is favorable no is favorable with your objectives whereas if you try to be to to see the big picture especially if you wish to evaluate a certain population then you cannot be able to obtain that val that the validity of that data and in turn it will you cannot come up with a valid conclusion to support your research. So it is a very important for you students, especially when you conduct theses, kailangan talaga na yung data na uh, kinokollect nyo sa mga, some, sa mga field studies ninyo, especially for experimental research because uh, I have an experience with experimental research. So, kailangan talaga, it is based on the actual observations that are happening in the field during the conduct of your study or in the laboratory. Okay? And if your conclusions are valid, then there might be other researchers or other students who might be interested with, with the conclusions of your data and uh, in, in turn, they, they may opt to continue or validate your data in order to see or to make sure that your study is valid. Your study is empirical based on the data that you have gathered. No? That is the work of a research. 
Kaya nga, research, di ba? Because from the word search, at saka re, the, the prefix re, so meaning search again. Huh? The science is dynamic and evolving. Kaya it is imperative to assure the validity of a particular data then it must it must be it must under undergo series of research until if there are some updates if there are kumbaga kung because as time passes by nag evolve nag upgrade ang ating technology nag upgrade din nag for example kahit ang virus di ba yung covid-19 virus nag upgrade din siya nag mutate kumbaga kaya for example the vaccine that was released no early this month or i think last month i don't know the exact date kailangan yung i-validate dahil pwede na yung yung effect efficacy ng vaccine would be would not would no longer be feasible and effective in in the succeeding in the, in the succeeding times especially if may bagong variant na naman ng COVID-19 okay so that is actually i am showing you the bigger picture about research and it is important to apply statistics and when you mean statistics then we do sampling techniques of course we we gather data from the samples in order to analyze the entirety of a population and that is why it's it's a dire need for us to collect data as honest as possible okay so let's proceed so first is a simple random sampling. It refers to a limited number of individuals chosen from the population in which every individual has an equal chance of being selected in the sample before the selection is done. Okay? So it, it employs randomization schemes such as drawing of lots, the use of cards, or the use of table of random numbers. So say for example, for drawing of lots, yung alam yung, kumbaga sa Bisaya, bunot-bunot. So draw lots, no? kumbaga. So actually, when you, when you do draw lots, you are actually doing randomization. Because you cannot be able to predict no, what number yung mapipili mo. And the use of cards. You could also, because it is distributed, distributed randomly, hindi mo rin, it would be hard for you no, to know kung anong, anong card ang mapipili mo. Diba? Pag, nag, pag nagdula mo o tong it's, no? or saan ba, ano ba, sa ba na nga dula, no? Pero when you, when you play, play, uh, play cards, hindi mo mapipredict if anong set ng cards ang mapipili mo in order for you to have a winning winning strategy towards your your success or victory na mapapanalo mo yung tong it's or anong playing cards i don't know no hindi na ako naglalaro ng ng baraha di ba and the use of random numbers i believe that i sent a video about generating num random numbers so you could also use your calculator para mag-generate ng random numbers. So, yan yung idea ng simple random sampling. Simply lang. You can actually do it no, without any without any technology that you need to use. Kasi, when you do draw lots, madali lang yan. Okay? So, Table of random numbers, I think we can no longer discuss this because I already explained this during one of my videos that I sent in your Google Classroom. So let us just jump to this sampling, okay? 
So I am sure alam na alam niyo ang lottery sampling, no? So lottery sampling, na if you happen to na, na, nakapaglaro na kayo ng loto, <laughs> no? Or nagtaya ka o uh, sweat dress, di ba? That is actually lottery sampling or it is also called as fishbowl technique. Okay, so you assign numbers to the participant of the population and then you write the numbers of the participant in small pieces of paper. One number to a piece. No, Murada tag nag, ano, nag, nag agent sa hanang loto center. So roll these small pieces of papers and then put them in a container big enough to allow the rolled papers to move freely in all directions. So imagine yun ano? So you roll these pieces of paper. The idea there is after you submitted your numbers, your set of numbers, no, it is randomly during the the show, especially when you come to to make taya in the lotto, then actually during the during the show, numbers are randomly picked. No? I hope that numbers are randomly picked because there are some hearsays that there are also discrepancies with lotto. Diba? Yung weight sa mga bola, you know, things like that. Anyway, and then you shake the box thoroughly and pick a number until the required number of samples is reached. Every time shaking a container before picking a number. So, alam nyo na to, no? So that is all about lottery sampling. And next is stratified random sampling. In this type of sampling, the population is divided into categories or what we call strat stratum for singular and strata for plural. And getting the members at, non at random proportionate to each stratum or subgroup. So what you're going to do you, in a certain population, you divide it into groups each belonging to the same stratum. For example, no, the basis of your stratification is geographical, no, kung anong specific na lugar. It may involve a statistic of population such as income. Probably, you could switch to based on the economic status of a particular population. Diba? May mga may mga tao in a, may mga sample in a particular in a population wherein uh, above 50,000 yung income nila no or and on the other hand no meron ding marami-raming mga samples wherein uh, kumbaga minimum wage lang yung income nila for for a day to day or a monthly basis and then you could also you could also make a stratum or strata about occupation kung in for example here in CMU no may mga may mga nakatira na yung occupation nila is doc uh, occupation nila are doctors, engineers, agriculturists no or kahit di dito sa CMU kahit sa lugar ninyo or a specific city and then the sex no it could be male or female the age no kung puber kung sa teenager ba or young adults no and then year in college or professional status things like that those are the examples of stratum or a plural strata and then the the participants within each strata should be selected at random so kung may napipili ka ni isa sa mga strata that would be subject of your research, no? Then you must select, no? You must select those participants within that particular strata or stratum at random. Okay? So for stratified random sampling, the example if your population is 1000, and your desired sample is 100, the strati stratified according to some variables. So, for example, if you identify a different strata that constitute your population, so, for example, sex as the first stratum, so 
you have identified that in a population of 1,000, you have identified that there are 200 males and 800 males. And your desired sample is just 100. So in order to, to obtain the value of males and females for every 100 sample, then you need to do this mathematical operation. You divide the members of the male and the females into percent shares. So you get the percentage of the number of males in a given population. So you divide 200 by 1,000 and which results to 20%. Same computation with the percentage for females. And then after which, until you obtain the percentage of males and females as knowing that sex is the first stratum, then you multiply each share by 100 in order to obtain their uh, their value in a given sample, which is 100. So 200 times 20% equals 20, and 80% 80, 80 times 100 equals 80. So that is all about uh, stratified random sampling. So next is systematic sampling. So this refers to the process of selecting every nth element in the population until the desired sample size is obtained. So it is just a, it, it is just like the simple random sampling. No? Kaya lang, yung kaibahan nila is my specific position in a given in a given set of sample na pipiliin mo at random. Okay? So, uh, kung sabihin natin nth element, meaning there is a specific position. So, a system that is a planned strategy for selecting members after a starting point is selected at random, such as every, every tenth subject. So, for example, you want to you want to get the systematic random sampling of a given value, no? For example, from 1 to 100. Tsaka yung napili mo is 3. Okay? So, when you apply when you apply that 10th subject, so since napili mo is 3, you just add uh, you just add plus 3 for the 10th. So, kumbaga, ang kukunin mo ng sample no, in a given set is yung ika-13. Because when you add 10 in in the number 3 na napili mo, it, it, result, it will result to 13. Okay? So, so to ensure that your systematic sampling is a good substitute for random sampling. However, you need to see to it that the original sample list should be in random order. Kasi pag if you arrange the names alphabetically, then it is impossible that you may lead, you may yield a bias sample. Okay? I hope nakuha nyo yung concept. So, for example, oh, ito na yun, no, actually, nauna lang, nauna na lang ko gata kong example, di ba? So, you decide the number of participants, divide the population size, and then, if you select an, a sample of 200 from the list of 2,000 participants, then you randomly select a number between 1 to 10 and then start with the participant and take the 10th participant in the list after that. So for example, yung sinabi ko kanina, this is much more detailed. So for an entry number between 1 to 10 should also be random. So if you pick 3 by chance... So, add the sampling interval 10 to 3 and thus the 13th is your second sample and then 23, 33, 43, so on and so forth. Okay. So, yung pangapat is cluster sampling. It is sometimes called as area sampling because it is usually applied on a geographical basis. 
Okay? So it occurs when you select members of your sample in clusters random, rather than using separate individuals. And it is practical sampling technique used if the complete list of the members of the population is not available. It is more like similar, no, nung kanina, wherein for cluster sampling lang, you are actually do you are actually, actually doing randomization. Kumbaga. However, kailangan mo lang yung when we say kasi when you talk about cluster sampling, no? We are basing the samples to be obtained, no? For example, one example talaga is for a geographical basis kasi yan yung mas madaling ma-associate when we talk about clusters. Kasi in, uh, you you classify them into groups. Okay? So the subjects are studied in naturally occurring groups or clusters. So for example, choosing a number of schools randomly from a list of schools. And then all the students in these schools are included in the samples since they belong to schools. And then students belonging to one randomly selected schools constitute one cluster and are assumed and are assumed to be alike with respect to the characteristics relevant to the variables of your research. Okay? So for example, kumbaga, you are to choose a number of schools, specifically in here in the Philippines. Diba? So yun, you are to run you are to randomly choose no whatever school, regardless kung private ba or or SUC no or state university or colleges no from the list of school is but for example if we spec if you may if you make the list to be specific so kumbaga schools that are offering agriculture okay kung of course you need to randomly select the particular school and Whatever school to be chosen, so for example, napili yung CMU among no, how many schools in the Philippines who are offering agriculture program. So, yun palang students that belonging, no, that, be, that belong to that chosen school are constitute that one's cluster. At once napili mo na yung CMU, you are to choose randomly, no, Kung sino, kung sino mga students ang ang isa subject mo for your research, yung i-evaluate mo. Okay? And then for multi-stage sampling, it involves a complex of sampling technique that makes use of several stages or phases in getting the sample, such as dividing the population into strata. And then dividing each stratum into clusters, okay? And drawing the a sample from each cluster using a simple random technique. Yeah? So for example, mag-hatag mag, mag ko, ano, example. Okay, so for example, ha? Okay. So, example lang, No? If we choose the stratum or for example uh kung strata because it's plural no uh say for example in Mindanao no you divide the population in the, into strata so for example we will we will consider the uh the provinces as the the strata in Mindanao so in the event that randomly you choose Bukid nun, no? Among those strata. So, after which, you will divide the, the Bukid Nun into clusters. So, pre, say for example, in Bukid Nun, you are to, you are to study, no, a particular, ano, a particular research wherein in Bukid Nun, you divide into municipalities. At saka, in each municipality, no? 
pipili ka ng mga student na, say for example, mag-evaluate ka sa mga student na ga, ga, mga specifically yung mga STEM students. So, senior high. So, everything, no? In everything that you select or you choose, it is, you make sure that you choose it randomly. No? Gikan sa gikan sa broader sense until the narrow sense. No? Gikan sa strata, in Mindanao, in the event nga randomly napili na mong bukid nun. So, and napili mo na, napili na ni mong bukid nun, so mamili na po dayon ka randomly kung unsang uh, cluster. So, for example, no, ang cluster nato is municipalities or cities. So, say for example, napili ni mo ang Valencia. So, ani da yung Valencia? Mamili na po dayon ka kung kinsa nga mga senior high who, who are taking STEM strand. So, mamili na po ka na ano, randomly among those students from Valencia who are currently taking STEM. So the idea there that in multi-stage sampling, no, it involves several stages or phases. Okay? So for multi-stage sampling, pwede mong i-apply yung simple random sampling or systematic random sampling. So kung for, for simple random sampling, so by by chance, pipili ka lang ng ng strata from strata and then and then into clusters no kung napili mo na yung yung municipality or city so say for example yung example kanina sa Valencia and then pipili ka ng student from Valencia who are currently taking STEM so when you do simple sim, simple random sampling so probably you could you could do draw lots or whether they know if you assign you, you if you pre assign numbers to those students selected then you could also you can assign them numbers and then you will just uh, manipulate your calculator to do to, to do generation of random numbers okay so siguro no the idea there kay dili man gyud nimo ma predict no kay random gani no so probably maghimo lang kag estimate nga within this range this is assigned for this random student and this para dali ra nimo po dayon ma identify so the idea there no for this kind for this type of sampling it it makes use of several stages og dili gid mawala ang element of randomization okay So to obtain the appropriate sample size with respect to the population size, the Sloven formula may be used. Okay? So where n is equals uh, population n divided by 1 plus n e squared. So the small n is the sample size, the big n or capital N is the population size, and the margin of error is E. Okay, you need to remember this formula. So, for example, in a study, no, I believe, dali rani siya sa inyo ha, no? In a study, the size of population is 10,000. What is the sample size of 2% margin of error is allowed? So, N equal, no, to apply the formula, then we derive the values, the given values. So, N is equals... 1 plus n e squared. So remember, no? Ayaw ginin nyo kalimti ang rule in m dash, especially in doing mathematical operation. So my point there is, when you say m dash, so unaw ginin mga multiplication. So kung aha diri no, given, given those values or sen mathematical sentences, Ang unahong gid nimo nga uh, ikwan nimo ang unahong gid nimo nga uh, i settle no especially no when you when you want to obtain a certain value then do not uh, do not leave this principle of m dash na kinangla no unahon sa nimo magmultiply ka then to be followed by magdivide 
and then mag-add and mag-subtract. So in this case, no, when we derive the given values, so it will result to n is equals 1,000 plus, uh, 1,000, 10,000 rather, divided by 1 plus 10,000. And then the marginal error is 2%, the allowed marginal error. So you, you need to obtain the square based in the derivation of the formula. So makita ni mo, no nga, applying the MDAS, giuna sa yun ni mo og, obtain ang square. Okay? Kung makuha, kung kuha ni mo ang square of a particular value, then you need to multiply it by itself. Okay, so 0.2% no square it will result to 0 0.04. Tsaka pa ka, no, mag-multiply na po into the value of the population, which is N. Kaya ni mo siya i-add sa 1. Because this separates no, the value of 1 and the value of n is squared para dili ka malibog. Okay? Tsaka mo, i-add siya sa 1. So, di ba? How the, how the equations are being arranged, dili yung ka malibog. So, remember the MDAS. So, 10,000 divided by 1 plus 4. So, it, it will result to 10,000 divided by 5. So, grabe na siya ka-expanded, no? But I would I would resort to this kind of presentation, no? Especially if if you will take your exam. Okay, mas mayo nang expanded, at least detailed. So, tsaka mo siya i-divide. Okay? Ayaw mo kalibog, no? Nga no, giuna man ang add, no? No, no, okay. Of course... Before we obtain the value, kinanglan, masettle ni mo ang value sa imong numerator o sa imong denominator. Before ka mong buhat o operation. So the result would be 2,000. And that is the representative sample out of, out of 10,000. However, this formula is not applicable to a small population. Okay? So, say for example, with this table, no? Makita ninyo, no? Magkikita nyo, no? Galibog na ko, magtaghalog ko or magbisaya, no? <laughs> so, makita ninyo, no? Nga, uh, based on the table, uh, given the percentage of margin of error, there are some certain number of or, or size of the population we're in, there are, dili na applicable na siya nga percentage sa margin of error. It means that the assumption of the normal approximation is poor and the sample size formula does not apply. When we say it doesn't apply, so unrealistic na siya. It is not, not actually occurring in reality. Okay, what matters most no principles sa man yun itanan, pero what matters most that kanang, we could also come up with the values that are realistic, that is naturally occurring no, in reality. So, given those values, dili na, muna nga asterisk siya kay, uh, dili na siya, kuan, dili na siya applicable sa ito ang kwantaron, sa ito ang basis of measurement of a population. Okay? So, no? These are some acceptable sizes, no? According to Gay of 1976. For descriptive research, no? So, para ni sa mga DevCom students, no? You are actually doing descriptive research. So, when you conduct a study, ang minimum acceptable sizes, no, is 10%. But for smaller populations, the minimum of 20% may be required. So you try to assess, no, nga, uh, say for example, nagadepende mang gina sa yung target data or the target respondents. So, para mas dali sa yung nga part, so, kung mas valid ang, mas validated or mas valid ang imuang data na makukuha din, you opt 
to study uh, large populations and you get the 10%, that is the minimum acceptable sizes. However, it doesn't limit there. So you could uh, you could switch more than 10% sa inyong population. That would be better. And for correlational research, meaning when you say correlation, no, we are actually studying associations from one trait or from one variable to another. So common ito sa experimental research, especially in plant breeding, wherein when you do correlation. So the minimum is 30 subjects so that, no, so that your data could be acceptable and valid. For the casual comparative research, 15 subjects per group, okay? And then for experimental research, 15 subjects per group pa rin. However, some authorities believe that 30 per group should be considered minimum. And on my part, no, whenever, whenever, no, if possible, if 30 is attainable, then I could, I would switch for 30 compared to 15. As long as if you are concerned, no, that you would like that your the output of your research would be uh, reliable, fruitful, and feasible, then you switch for those uh, for those population sizes, no, na medyo dako ulit siya. Okay, okay. For example, in plant breeding, we are we, we love a data or generating data from a very diverse you know, data set you know, or very diverse population because in plant breeding, we are dealing with many varieties that are, are subjected to different treatments. You know? Say, for example, treatments, if we want to know its responses to a given uh, abiotic stress or stressors, then the the more accessions or the more varieties we can we can study or evaluate then the better okay and that would make your the outputs of your research feasible and valuable okay so another one gay suggested minimum acceptable sizes for descriptive research so 20% for a smaller population, as small as 500 and below. So take note of this. And then 10% of the population for a larger population, such as 1,000. And Pagoso et al. of 1979 proposed a formula that N is equals to N1 plus N, no? the products of the products of the of the Population and, and the E or the marginal error. Okay? Wherein E is the desired margin of error should not be higher than 5%, 5% which is ideally 3%. Okay? Example. Sanjot sa mga animation, no? <laughs> If the total population is 1,000 and the margin of error to be adopted is 3%, then the size of the population is computed as, you know, you're deriving the formula. So applying the MDAS, okay, so you, you settle first the final values for your numerator and your denominator. And in this case, and even in the previous example, yung numerator, okay na. Kaya na naman ang value no, na in place na sa 10K, 10,000. So, kinangalan na limukha ng number ang value sa denominator. So, apply the MDAS. You get the square of 3%. So, you need to get the product by multiplying 3% by itself. So, it will result to 0 .00, 0 0.0009. After which... You multiply it with 10,000, which is the value of your population. And tsaka panimo i-add sa 1. So 10,000 divided by 10 equals 1,000. Okay? So if you try to analyze how to compute the value of the sample size, then 
you can you you just divide the the total number no the total number of students say for example in in every in every department so for elementary secondary and college you get the percentage no over the total population so 6000 divided by 10000 equals ilaman or 6000 you get the 10% rather i'm oh, sorry no so 6000 times 0 0.10 0 0.1 plus 600 okay so actually you could also obtain no using the using the the procedures that i mentioned so we try 6000 divided by 10000 so it's actually 60 percent so you just multiply it by 100 i hindi pala no so erase lang no so you, you will just switch to 6,000, 6,000 times 10%. Okay? Hmm. Let's do it again. Okay, 60% times 1,000. Ah, okay. Uh, there, there are some mistakes. So, na mali lang o no? multiply. So, actually, you can also use the the procedure that I mentioned. So, only that imulang i-multiply 6,000 divided by 10,000 times the sample size pala. 1,000. So, 600. So, it depends on the problem. no? If, if the sample size is not given, then you directly multiply 6,000 by 10%. Okay? So, this, are, this is the formula. And then, n divided by the sample, n, the sample divided by population. So, 1,000 times 10,000 equals 10%. So, I think, Dali uh, masabtan. Okay? So that is all about sampling techniques and sample size. So, tip lang, no? You just master the procedures, familiarize the, the differences between, or the differences among the sampling techniques. No? That would be helpful for you in order to assess uh, kung, ano ang, kung anong sampling techniques yung applicable in your particular research. Okay? So, thank you very much for listening and uh, I hope that uh, this video discussion would help you in answering your laboratory exercises for your laborator for Agri44 Laboratory and I hope that Makatabang put me in order for you to study your exams in Agri 44. So thank you very much for listening and have a great day.